What up y'all, it's Titar, and today we're looking at Kalos Pokemon that might Mega Evolve in Legends 8, and we're being as realistic as possible. Last time we left off giving Floor just the yes, then we're continuing from there. Next up is Gogo. Okay, here's the thing with Gogo, right? Would Gogo get a Mega Evolution? You see, Skiddo and Gogo were both rideable in the original Pokemon X and Y. They're both in confined areas. I think Skiddo, you rode around Lumios, and then Gogo, you just rode in some small area. But they could continue this trend where they give an old evolution to Gogo, a third stage. And this would be one of the ride Pokemon of the Legends game, like the Ursa Luna. So as you're going around old Lumio City as it's being redeveloped, this is one of the Pokemon you're riding on. Maybe to think of some city hazards, maybe it's a thorny place. And so you need a grass type Pokemon to get through it. Because remember, X and Y is actually kind of what introduced the ride Pokemon with being able to ride Rhyhorn over those rocky patches that Mammoths went through the snow. So they could continue this not only in the fashion of Legends Arceus, but also the way they did it in X and Y. And so Gogo getting a third stage for that would seem pretty good. But see, I've built up this rubric where two stage Pokemon can never get a Mega Evolution, right? And I want to break it sometimes because I know Game Freak would probably break it sometimes too. So I'm kind of 50 50 on whether Gogo should get an Evolution or a Mega Evolution. And I almost want to say that Mega Gogo with the whole new design and like the antlers growing out and spiking towards the enemy, that sounds a bit more likely to me. That Game Freak would Mega Evolve Goku instead of Evolve in. And so if we did have some kind of thorny environment back then, you would just ride the normal go Goat for that. I haven't said the rubric, have I? So pretty much if a Pokemon is very unusable, it might get a Mega Evolution. And if it's popular, it might get a Mega Evolution. Those are the two conditions that usually work. The other thing with go Goat is they gave it incredible stats. 531. That's almost as strong as Doraludon is. And Doraludon ended up getting an evolution. What, Gogo gonna be the new pseudo legendary? I'm gonna stick to the idea that it might get a Mega Evolution instead. So, Gogo, I'm giving you the check mark. I know you think, oh, bro, no one cares about Gogo, but it's just one of those Pokemon. It's like Mega Audino. Besides, if we're only getting like 10 Megas in this game, whichever Pokemon do get the Megas, you'll grow to like them the same way people grew to like Mega Sableye. Next up is the Pancham and Pangoro family. You know what? This is an easy one, Pangoro. You need to evolve. Let's look through some of Pangor's Pokedex entries. Although it possesses a violent temperament, it won't put up with bullying. It charges ahead and bashes its opponents like a berserker, uncaring about any hits it might take. So we can form some kind of evolution based off this. An evolution where Pangor only evolves after losing a lot of health and being pushed to a limit. Kind of like Annihilate. But mechanics-wise, it'd be more like Basky Legion, where you actually have to evolve it when it's at like 1 HP. It would become a Pokemon that transcends past the violent temperament, but would still be a Pokemon that don't put up with bullying and standing up for others. That would make more sense. I like that idea. So, Pangoro, I'm giving you the X. Next up is Furfru. Wow. So, Furfru is a Pokemon that, of course, has like eight different styles in this game. It's gonna have more styles in Legends here for sure. There's no chance Game Freak would miss this opportunity. Because it's such a moldable Pokemon, there's not much they would do to it. I suppose they could give it an evolution or mega where it retains the same design you put on it. That'd be kind of cool, right? Or I've got a better idea. So Furfru, let's say we give it an evolution in this game. And this evolution, it doesn't keep the hairstyles. It grows strong. I know Poodles, they're not supposed to be fighting, but in some way, it reverts back into stronger K9 features. And Furfru's 472 BST would go up to like 530 or something. But like I said, it would lose all its hairstyles. And then what they can do in this game is introduce an item exclusive to Furfru. Kind of like Pikachu's light bulb, where when Furfru holds it, it boosts a certain stat. Let's say it's slightly better than Eviolite. And so this way, both of them are viable. So you can keep Furfru as its current form and be able to mold its hairstyle. Or you can evolve it and make it a more usable Pokemon. Honestly, the situation could kind of work for a Mega too. I think people would have a lot of fun if for like the 10 different Furfru hairstyles, you can Mega Evolve and see a different appearance in each one. And you know, there's not that many normal type Mega Evolutions. There's Kangaskhan, Pidgeot, Audino, and Lopunny. So the normal type is one that they would want to focus on 
and give to some Pokemon. And Kalos Pokemon would be their favorite target. This is insane. I'm about to get Furfru the yes. Mega Furfru. Oh my goodness. I'm giving you the check mark. You know, Furfru is a threatening Pokemon. That fur coat ability doubles its defenses. If it mega evolves, it would keep fur coat and 100 additional BST. Or Game Freak could do something clever, kind of like with Mega Garchomp, where when Furfru mega evolves, it doesn't get fur coat. It gets some kind of other ability that instead boosts its attack. And so you have to pick the right moment to Mega Evolve it. You can keep it on Mega Evolve to be more defensive and wait to put it out of its shell. You know what? You're a good one. I'm giving you the check mark. Next up is Meowstic. Okay, Meowstic, you're a prime target for what I was saying earlier. The Diggersby situation where you just deserve a third stage form. You see, Meowstic is an interesting Pokemon where you see its eyes, they're folded down. Well, I spoiled it. Those are eyes. Those aren't ears. Like, I've played the game and the thing opens it up. And it's staring at me with four eyes. So they could do a spin on that where when Meowstic Mega evolves, like the eye, the ears grow giant and are just staring at you. And you can really lead into the two variants. The males. The defensive instinct of the males is strong. It's when they're protecting themselves or their partners that they unleash their full power. And then for females, they are a bit more selfish and aggressive than males. If they don't get what they want, they will torment you with their psychic abilities. This is kind of the same situation with the Furfrus though. It would be fun to be able to give the same Mega Stone to both Meowsticks and see a slightly different Mega Evolution in each. Kind of reminds you of Latios. But you know what, Meowstic? I'm giving you the X. <laughs> Next up is Aegislash. Do we even have to discuss this? 100% Aegislash is Mega Evolving in these games. It is far too popular Pokemon and such a unique Pokemon where it switches between the two stances. It's a Pokemon so good, even Dublade, Dublade is good with the Eviolite. It's Mega Evolution, it could keep stance change or it could have a Mega Evolution where it evolves beyond needing two different forms. Right now, Aegislash has 500 BST with 140 in both of its defenses. And then when it turns into its sword form, it becomes 140 in both of its offenses. It's hard to think how they could make a fused form between sword and shield. But what if they did something like this, where when you Mega Evolve Aegis Slash, it loses all of its defensive capabilities and it becomes like 200 attack, 200 special attack, and loses any remaining bits of its defense for like around 200 or like 150 speed. And so pretty much you would only Mega Evolve Aegislash to get one hit before it dies. It would be like an explosive weapon. This way, right? Think in the metagame. You're balancing between the two forms. And if the enemy's using Aegislash, you're terrified. Because at any moment, they can release the bomb and just kill you. And so you got to work around that. Let's look at some artwork for Mega Aegislash. Oh my goodness, this one's incredible. This is, oh god, this is Aegislash, the spirit inside, coming out and wielding the sword and shield itself, which is interesting because if you look at Aegislash's Pokedex entries, one of them says something along the lines of some ancient king who wielded Aegislash, eventually all his power drained and his kingdom fell. Sounds a lot like the ruinous Pokemon. And so this would be the spirit inside that did it. Because you have to remember at the end of the day, Aegislash is a ghost. Other entries say the Excalibur story where it only gets chosen by someone worthy. So because it's wielding both the sword and shield, maybe you neutralize all its stats. And so this would be another risk you take when you Mega Evolve it. You would lose the ability to play that game. But it would neutralize into, I don't know, 100 all around. But it would revert back to having no guard as its ability because it's got that all-seeing eye. So essentially what we're making here is an offensive Dewblade that'd be much faster. Unfortunately, there are not many moves that Aegislash needs something like no guard for. All right, scratch that idea. Honestly, I guess the best thing to do is just give it stance change. It'd be cool to see this thing animated stance changing where all it is is defending itself. Kind of feels like some kind of boss Pokemon. I love this art here. They also use the same ribbons as Aegislash you can see on the sides. Oh my god. <laughs> so here's another Aegislash, right? It's a very simple take where you just got Aegislash and he's holding two swords. He's found a Dewblade or two Honages, which is not too 
impossible. Especially if he's a ghost, he just somehow calls them and they come to his aid. And he stays a steel ghost type, but you can see how he lost his shield, right? So it's what we were saying. He gets rid of all his defenses. But they wrote an ability for it in the description. They called it Triple Blade, where the Pokemon hits three times. One at 100% strength, then the second and third at 20. Since Prento Bond was nerfed from 150 down to 125, maybe it'd make more sense that this is just 100 and then 10 and 10. The point is, it's supposed to be overpowered, right? He has no defenses to defend himself. You can kill him easily with like a shadow sneak or something. But the point is to show off that savage sword slashing. You want to give it moves that have secondary effects that trigger them as much as possible. I don't think Age Slash gets power up punch. It does get Iron Head, but that's not very visually appealing for the three swords. Fury Cutter wouldn't work three times in one turn, would it? Fury Cutter is like the move. No one can ever make Fury Cutter work. It'd be sick if he could make it work. You see, Fury Cutter does double the damage each time you use it. So technically, if it didn't count as one strike with this triple blade ability, it would reach its max damage after just one use. There's moves like Night Slash. You know what would make more sense? Age Slash doesn't have any good sword move to fit this description. What they can do is, in the same way... Prime Mape got a new signature move for this game, right? For Legends Arceus. They could give Aegis Slashes back in the day a signature move that goes with King Shield. Okay, we're not gonna call it King Sword because that's a bit predictable. We'll call it Knight Sword because, you know, the King would have a strong knight defending him. Sometimes the Kings are strong, but you would have his shield and then his strongest Knight Sword, something like that. And it would be like this 90 damage steel move that has like a 10% chance to lower the enemy's defense. So you'd be slashing three times trying to land that and it would pair perfectly with King Shield. It'd be like a staple move set and then it would fit the final design. Anyhow, we're not finishing this this video. Make sure I'll shank that like button. What is a Pokemon in Kalos you think deserves a Mega Evolution? And in fact, comment your take on a Mega Age Slash. What is the ultimate ability, stats, maybe type change you could give to it? And let's see who has the best idea. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.